Thank you so much, and good morning. It's good to have you all here today and uh, worshiping with us. Things were a little different this morning. I think that we are live streaming this service as well, and then this service will be rebroadcast at 11 o'clock. I feel like um, Walter Cronkite or something saying that, but we're going to be broadcasting this live during this hour, so we welcome those who are watching on Facebook. And then this service will be broadcast again at 11. We're going to be rotating our 11 o'clock and 8.30 services so that folks who are watching from home can get a, a full experience of our worship activity. So we're glad for your presence and grateful for those who are in the uh, band this morning. And the, uh, uh, we, you know, it's a little different because we're not, we're grateful for the band, yeah. And uh, uh, it's a little different because we don't have any singing but we do want you to uh, listen to the music and enjoy the music very much. I have some announcements this morning. First of all, please remember that on Wednesday from 2.30 until 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall, we'll have a blood drive sponsored by One Blood. If you would like to make an appointment, you can contact Doris Toomer. Her number is in the bulletin, or you can go online. I have a feeling that if you just show up, they probably will work to take you because this is a critical time for blood as we're getting into the holiday season, but probably would be better for you, more efficient for you if you went ahead and signed up or gave Doris a call and got that taken care of. Wanted to just mention how grateful we are to our youth group and to our congregation. If you watch the, uh, 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 read the newsletter and see the bulletin this morning, you'll see that we raised over $2,400 for world hunger and for hunger here locally through CCM, through our youth group's efforts in walking and through your efforts in giving. So we appreciate that wonderful outpouring of love and support and appreciate our youth group very much. They had a good time. These days, anytime they can get together is a good thing for them. So. Uh, we uh, enjoy being together and enjoyed having them to do that. We have some other things that we will share with you uh, later in the service. I did want to remind everyone that this is All Saints Sunday. It's not often that All Saints falls on All Saints Day, which is November the 1st, but it does this year. And so we'll have a time of remembrance for those who have passed in our congregation, and that will be later on in the service. We'll invite you to stand now for the order for confession and forgiveness, which is found in uh, your, uh, on your phone, um, because that's where it is. It's on your phone, and uh, um, you can follow along on there. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Our song of praise has created me a clean heart. The congregation may be seated. Thank you very much. I'm doing the, uh, the children's sermon this morning, and I thought that I would talk about uh, a thermos. Um, I used to, earlier in my ministry, and this is, this is Let's Talk, so I hope that uh, the children that are uh, at home are up and, and watching this. Um, earlier in my ministry, I tried to be very discreet about drinking sips of water or hot tea, those are the two suggestions, water or hot tea, um, to keep my whistle a little wet. And uh, uh, somebody suggested, I think maybe it was Don, that if I made a hot tea concoction with honey and lemon and lots of sugar, that would help my uh, I think the sugar is the key. That would help my voice. That's why I have such a booming voice on Sunday morning and you're constantly having to say, tone it down, Pastor John. And he also suggested that I get a thermos. And one of the wonderful things about a thermos is that it keeps the hot tea hot. I'm sure that some of those who are, are major, you majored in physics or engineering or something like that can explain how exactly a thermos works. All I know is that it does work, and it keeps this hot tea hot in a wonderful way. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had something that would keep our faith hot, our faith warm? You know, so many times we grow cold in our faith. Um, we have times in our lives where things don't go well and we feel like, well, God has abandoned us. We have times in our life where we may have difficulty praying. We pray and we feel like, well, we're not getting the results that we want or the results that we think we deserve. And we say, my goodness, is anybody listening out there? Our faith can grow cold. Today, we have two good reminders of ways to keep our faith hot, warm. I would say the first way is to continue to come to church. You know, it's so easy when we feel like things are not going well or when our faith is not as strong as it should be, it's so easy to say, well, you know, I don't even feel like I need to be in church. Um, and we stay away. Well, that's the worst thing that we can do. There is great strength to be found in coming together. Even though we're socially distanced in these days and we can't embrace each other or talk to each other as closely as we would like, we're still in each other's presence. And so there's great strength in being together and there's great strength in knowing that 
this is really where God's house is. And the people of God come together and we share in that fellowship. That's one way that our faith stays warm. But a second way is to remember those who have gone before us. Those that we call the saints. And looking around this gathering today, I know that so many of the people who are saints in your life are people who worshipped here. Or are people who took you to church in other places. Today is a reminder that those saints continue to be with us. Every Sunday we confess that we believe in the communion of saints. And that means that this great cloud of witnesses, this great circle of saints, continues to include us. They are with us here and everywhere. And so in my own life, I think about my mother, I think about my father, I think about so many people that I knew here at Kimball and who were inspirations to me and guides for me. And I know that you all have the same kind of people in your life. So let's keep our faith warm, not with a thermos, but with remembering that this is God's house and God's people are here and also remembering all the saints who have gone on before us and continue to cheer us on. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you on this All Saints Day for those people who have been forerunners in the faith for us, whether they be parents or grandparents, uncles, aunts, teachers, pastors, friends, fellow church members, spouses. We thank you for their lives and we thank you for their presence with us and their continuing to cheer us on. In the name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior. Amen. Take one more sip. I'll invite you to stand now for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, and we say together, Glory to you, O Lord. In the Beatitudes, Jesus provides a unique description of those who are blessed with God's favor. His teaching is surprising and shocking to those who seek wealth, fame, and control over others. Now the reading from Matthew's Gospel. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' snake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord, and we say together, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I have uh, confessed to you my faults and foibles and weaknesses many times in this pulpit. Well, today I'm going to say something that I think I do pretty well. I have never been one of those people who would like to go back to an earlier time in my life, to an earlier age. I feel like I've somebody, I'm somebody who has always been fairly content 
with where I am. Now, I have to tell you, I really loved high school. And as much as I loved high school, I loved college even more. And I was maybe 25 pounds, okay, I was maybe 45 pounds lighter back then, but who's counting? And maybe I had a little bit more hair on my head and was just a tad bit quicker on the basketball court or on a tennis court. But I have to be honest with you, I really don't want to go back to being 18 again or 22 again. I like where I am right now. 61, I've discovered, is a pretty good age. At 61, you have a little gray around your temples. And whether or not you're wiser, people think you're wiser, or at least they think you're wiser than somebody who's 21. When you're 61, young people will hold the door for you. And as you go through, they'll pat you on the shoulder and say, I hope you're having a really good day, sir. These days, my barber can work my 12-minute appointment into the schedule at a moment's notice. I, don't even, I just call the morning I need a haircut. And he says, come whenever you want to. But one thing about 61 that I have noticed is my memory. I just don't remember things the way I used to. Those of you who are getting older, I wonder if you have the same issue. I have always taken a calendar around with me, but I can confess to you that oftentimes it was just for show. I never really had to write anything down in the calendar because I could remember everything, dates, times, names, places, right here in my brain. And I never forgot, I never missed anything. But it was right about the time I got bifocals, or maybe the time I got trifocals. I began to notice that if I didn't write something down, if I didn't make a note on my calendar, it was gone. I simply couldn't remember it anymore. My memory was no longer my friend. We know the story of Israel. Israel was carried off into exile. Their cities were destroyed. Their families were split up. Their temple lay in ruins. But Israel was wise enough to know that one of the worst things that happens in exile is that those who are over you want you to forget. They want you to forget who you are. And more than that, they want you to forget whose you are. Israel knew this. And so it was during this terrible period of exile that many good things began to happen for Israel. It was during this period of exile that the synagogue was invented. I mean, think about it. What do you do when you are isolated? What do you do when you are um, a stranger in a strange land? Will you gather together with the people you can find who are like you, who have a shared story? And that's what you do. You, you tell those stories again and again and again, and you remember that your primary identity is not as a slave in Egypt. But your primary identity is as a beloved and chosen child of God. That's who you are. I would say to you that in various ways, that is exactly what we do here every Sunday. We gather together and we remember, we tell these old, old stories that are written in this wonderful book. We remember God's presence with us in prayer and in scripture and in song and sacrament. 
And we know that if we forget these stories, and God forbid, even worse, if our children and grandchildren forget these stories, we are in danger of forgetting who we are. And we are in danger of forgetting who God means us to be. That's one of the reasons we celebrate All Saints Sunday in this place year after year. I don't know if you knew, know this or not, but not many denominations celebrate this day anymore. Lutherans, Episcopalians, Roman Catholics, just a few of us now. It sounds All Saints Day, it sounds sort of old-fashioned to our 21st century year, sort of mysterious and medieval. But All Saints is a reminder to all of us that this is how we find our way in life. You listen to stories about these wonderful people who were here before us. We listen and we remember. I told you last week about Carlisle Marney, the great old Baptist preacher. He once remarked that a person is a lot like a house. He said, you know, we have our living rooms, which is where we entertain. We have our basements and our attics, which is where we store our junk. But the way to observe All Saints Sunday, he suggested, is to walk out onto our front yard and to salute the people on our balcony. The balcony people are the ones in our lives who have gone before us, who have encouraged us, who have left us a legacy. And in a very real sense, that's what we do on this All Saints Sunday. We remember and we salute all the saints who have gone before us, whose faithfulness provided us with the faith we have today and who remind us by the way they lived and by the way they died that this is not all there is. That as important as this life is, that we are promised eternal life with God and with all God's people. I told somebody this past week, that I think I've done more informal counseling in the last eight months than I've done in the last eight years. Maybe some of you who are in supervisory positions have found yourselves doing the same thing. Every way we look right now, there seems to be some sort of dilemma going on. In fact, a recent poll by USA Today found that a quarter of Americans, 25% of us, think that these are the most challenging times we have ever faced as a country. I read that and I said, it's one of the things you do when you're 61, you have a little perspective. I said, seriously, these are the most challenging times we've ever faced? Just go back to the time of this congregation when it was founded. We worry about a shaky economy. They started this church in the midst of the Great War. A war which involved every civilized nation in the world. The saints who started this church endured the crash of the stock market and a depression that plunged this nation into an economic nightmare for 10 years. 10 years. You and I are rightly concerned about the pandemic, but the saints here endured a flu epidemic in 1918 that killed over 20 million Americans, many of them young people, 50 million around the world. They watch children in this very community come down with polio. They watch swimming pools and movie theaters and amusement parks close down because of the infectious nature of this terrible disease. We are fearful today of protests and protesters. The saints here dealt with 
Hitler and Mussolini and the Japanese Empire and the very real possibility that these evil nations, and they were evil, were going to conquer the world. My goodness, many of us are old enough to remember going to bed during the Cold War wondering if tomorrow was going to come. We bemoan government and we are so ready for this election Tuesday to just come so we won't have to listen to any more political ads at least for another three or four months. The saints here witnessed three presidents assassinated and a fourth president forced to resign completely uncharted territory for this nation. We face a lot of tough problems but when you read history, you find that this church, our people, have faced bigger, even more threatening challenges in our past. And God has pulled us through. Memory does that. It assures us that we have a tomorrow. And that's a very good thing. And so on this All Saints Sunday, let us give God thanks for the gift of our memories. And let us promise God not to abuse our tradition as a means of keeping our church stuck in the past, but rather as encouragement and motivation to always have us move forward to the future. And to look to the future, not with dread, but with excitement and hope and promise. To that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us stand now as we, on this festival Sunday, use the Nicene Creed as our affirmation of faith. With the people of God in Christ, now and in every time, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray now for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Each of the prayer petitions in this Sunday will conclude, Hear us, O God, 
and your response will be, your mercy is great. You may be seated or kneel. Lord of all the saints, we praise you this day for those people who have gone before us, whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and across space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and to new places around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. We ask that you would bless the work of conservationists who train our attention to the wonders of this world that you have made for us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, we ask that you would guide this country Red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts that are eager to understand our common needs and to seek our common good. We pray this day for our President Donald, and we pray for our Governor, Roy, and for all who make and administer and judge our laws. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your Son's blessing came to all those who were living with poverty, with grief, with hunger, with thirst, and with persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match Christ's own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who are suffering. Especially this day, we pray for Mabel Brown, for Tom Brown, for Brenda Brown, who will have surgery tomorrow, for all of those who are victims of the coronavirus. We especially pray for Wilma Keller, and ask that you would be with her as she recuperates at home. We pray for Mary Dorton, for Lily Fisher. We pray for the family of Terry Fisher, for Shirley Helms, for Judy and Bob Hill, for Gary and Joyce Mallerney, for Vicki and Mike McCombs, Marty and Perry Ann Payne, Jim and Paulette Peeler, for Anna Richter, for John and Betty Shaver, for Erlene Snipes, for Ruth Trollinger, for all those who are unemployed or underemployed because of the pandemic. We pray for Eric Story at the death of his grandmother. And we pray for Becky Brantley as she struggles with Alzheimer's. And for others in our circle of faith or friends, we ask that you would hear our prayers for them, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. It's at this point in the service that we have a rite of remembrance. We had a dear person in our congregation to pass away last evening, Terry Fisher, who has been a longtime member of this congregation and is much beloved passed away late last evening. Liz, we want you and your family to know how much we are praying for you all today. Um, you must know that when I spoke with Liz last night, I of course said, don't come in today 
I think part of it was she didn't trust me to get things on air or online as they should be, but knowing Liz, we know the main reason that she wanted to be here was just what we talked about earlier. This is the place where our faith stays strong. This is the place where our faith stays hot. And you all, those of you who are here this morning and those of you who are with us online are part of that communion of saints and strength for Liz and for her family. Let us stand together. Today we stand with saints alive and saints from whom their labors rest. Lord God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses. We give you thanks for your servants of days past, for Abraham, the father of believers, and for Sarah, his wife, for Moses, the lawgiver, and for Aaron, the priest, for all the prophets and those who recorded for us your truths, for Peter and Paul and all the apostles willing to witness to your word, for Mary and Joseph who cared for your son as a child, for the saints and martyrs in every time and every land, for those we know and those whose faith and acts of faith are unknown to us, for preachers of your truth who are faithful to their convictions, for renewers of society, for artists and scientists, for devoted public servants, for those who care for the sick, who defend freedom, who teach, for all who use their gifts to glorify you and do your will among us. We give you thanks for the faith and lives of your people. Rejoicing in that great company of sinners made saints by your grace, O Lord, lift members of the faith community that is Kimball Memorial Lutheran Church who have, during the past 12 months, inherited the joys you have prepared for all those who love you. We remember Patty Morris, who passed away November the 11th, 2019. For Arlene Boston, November the 3rd, 2019. For Marty Sides, January the 18th, 2020. For Evelyn Whitley, March the 2nd, 2020. For Linda Rivers, April the 9th, 2020. For Gladys Lydecker, April the 28th, 2020. For Libby Hunsuck, May the 29th, 2020. For Robert Gribble, June the 7th, 2020. And for Terry Fisher, October the 31st, 2020. We remember also others, beloved of those who worship here, who now gather at your throne of light. Keep us in union with them through our faith in your grace. We dedicate this service of worship to your glory, O Lord, and the remembrance of them all. May their examples of faithfulness to your word and sacrificial service to your church not be lost on us, but compel us to carry on their witness. While we live, we live for you, O Lord. When we die, we live with you, O Lord. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours, O Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.
Let us share God's peace with each other. You may be seated. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray now as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may receive the elements now as these words have said, are said, this is the body of Christ which is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Let us stand together. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now receive this benediction for the week to come. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessings of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Our sending song is I Am a Friend of God, 
The ushers, I believe, will be dismissing everyone by pews this morning.